Hey, you've heard of Windows XP, Windows 7, I oh, forget about Windows Vista. Now comes Windows 8, today on Lab Rats. Today's episode of Lab Rats brought to you by HostGator. Hello and welcome to another edition of Lab Rats. My name is Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. And this is a show where we demystify technology and today on the show we're going to demystify Windows. Windows 8. Windows, Windows 8? Windows 8 Consumer Windows. Preview. That's why I've got this uh, Windows-y looking machine here from Acer. Well, I forget where your Apple thingy has gone. Yeah, it's somewhere else. Okay, good. All right, but this is a good thing. This is an exciting thing, right? This is like the next generation of stuff. I guess. Microsoft. It seems like Microsoft just released Windows 7, too. I know, I just was recently. But anyway, but it's good, though, because it's mm -hmm. tablet, tablet, tablet world right now. Yeah, and that's really what Windows 8 is uh, making a play for, is uh, all the other operating systems, like, like Mac OS, it has um, a desktop version, and then you've got iOS, which is the mobile version on the tablets. Microsoft is trying to get rid of those distinctions and just have a single operating system that goes across it. So the same one is going to be on here and on your tablet. Can I keep it up with Apple? Or maybe trying to leapfrog them. That's, we'll, that's we'll what they're see. thinking. Okay. But is it worth it? We'll find out today on Lab Rats. That's exciting. Okay, so stay tuned with us because we're going to show you all the tips and tricks and cool stuff and maybe why you want Windows 8 too. But first, this episode brought to you by host Gator. Looking for a place to launch your blog or website? Frustrated with customer service at your current hosting provider? Go with HostGator and get up and running in minutes. With plans starting at just $3.96 a month, you get top-rated 24-7 customer support, access to tools including a website builder with over 4,000 templates. HostGator will even migrate your current site for free. Servers are 130% powered by wind energy and it's completely green web hosting. Unlimited disk space, unlimited bandwidth, 45-day money-back guarantee, and $100 of Google AdWords credit to market your website. Right now, for Revision 3 viewers, HostGator is offering 25% off your order or your first month is free. Go to HostGator.com and enter the code LABRATSREV3. That's LABRATSREV3 at checkout to get your discount. Do it now! You know, I'm really excited about the new Windows 8. Get excited! <laughs> I'm really not, actually. It's so funny, you know? Like, so a couple years back, I switched over to Apple. I was the worst, like, diehard Apple hater. And then I like, switched over to the dark side. And now I became Steve Jobs' best friend, except he died. And, and now Windows 8, I don't care. About Steve Jobs? No, I care about Steve Jobs. Oh, good, good. But I don't care about, well, actually, no, you know what I do care about? And what I'm excited about this is, you know, it's a new interface. It's sort of touch capable. And I think it was, it's sorely been missing. Yes. Because Windows 7 on a tablet's ridiculous. It is, and, and it yes, is. but the problem is, in some ways, Windows 8 on a laptop is ridiculous too, and we'll get into that. <laughs> okay. All right. So where do we start? I mean, I see right. tiles on a start. Okay. Well, first of all, it's the Windows 8 Consumer Preview, as we mentioned off the top. Yes. You can download this yourself if you want, and you can try it out. Uh -huh. uh, there's a license key you can enter in to try it out for a while. Uh -huh. um, it's very much beta software, so it's not the final version. So it's just a preview, so you can find out what it's all beta, about. Beta, for those of you who are like, you just crawl out front of me for rock, uh, it means kind of test, you know, preview, like pre, uh, pre, before you actually pay for it software, and it's not finished. Yeah, in some ways, it's almost even an alpha, which is pre-beta, but... Don't confuse them. Wow. There you go. Poor people in LabRats land have no idea about an alpha. They, they know. They know. Well, some of them do. They All know. right. Okay. So, now, you see this. You mentioned tiles on this. This is what it looks like. It's pretty. And this does not look like Windows used to look. No. What this looks like is this looks like Windows Phone. A uh, Windows Phone, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. So, if you've had a chance to look at the Windows Phone, it has this tile-based interface. A lot of people really, really liked it. Yeah. Um, it's cool. Very easy. You get, a, as I said, in each of the tiles, you have either an icon or you have a little bit of information. So, it can tell you what the weather is like. It can tell you that you have X number of messages. And the same follows through over here. So, you okay. can see that you have these tiles and uh, depending on how many programs you've installed, it can go over quite a while. I don't really have that many here, just a little bit. Okay. So. Now, one thing you notice is it went sideways as opposed to up and down. Yeah. And this is for swiping back and forth with your finger. So this is really designed for a, a laptop, yes, but a touch laptop perhaps and likely a tablet. Right. So yeah. that's, it, it's meant to appeal to both worlds. Right. And one of the things you're going to notice about this instantly is there's no easy way to turn it off. This is the start menu right here. But remember in the, in the old days, you would click the start button and you could turn it off right from there? Yeah. 
Well, you can't really do that here. But There's... you never turn your tablet off anyway. You just kind of power it down. Exactly. But you want to turn your laptop off. Right. Right. So there's, it's, it's gone to a slightly different interface based more on that tablet thing. And it's thrown a few kinks into it for people that are doing this on their desktop computers. Right. And to be fair, this is a beta software, so they, it's not finished yet. Yeah. So they might fix it still. And so, you know, to, to be fair. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, complainers out there right now looking at this interface and going, what the hell? Yeah. And uh, there was a great video out there from Chris Perillo who threw his dad onto this and said, okay, just try to figure it out. Yeah. So but where's the start button? Yeah, and the thing about touch when you're dealing with a tablet is it's got to be intuitive. It really does have to be intuitive. And in a lot of ways, if you're using this on the desktop, this just is not intuitive. Yeah. And trying to figure out where you're going to go, especially when you get into the old school mode and getting back into this, which is Metro. That's what they call the interface on Metro. the tablet. Yeah, got it. Yeah, yeah. It, it's really difficult, and it takes some different thinking. you got to think different, like Apple used to say, except now you're using a Microsoft product. Okay. So with, with Apple, you've got a, an Apple ID, your iTunes, your App Store ID. So same thing with Microsoft? Are you using a Microsoft thingy? Yeah, so you've got a Windows Live ID that you can okay. use. And again, this leverages the power of uh, the Live uh, ID that you use in various other places. So on your Xbox, in the marketplace, on your phone. Uh, uh, like Hotmail all, sucks all your, the Microsoft yeah, services. Your in. Hotmail, your Live Mail, all of the services that you use elsewhere with Microsoft ID, sure. you can pull in automatically when you sign up. And in fact, when you start this, the installation process on this, you can actually choose to sign up uh, and start the whole process by creating an account that is your live ID and your password. So it automatically bolts into all of that stuff. Again, kind of like the uh, process that you use when you're signing up for a Windows 8 phone yeah. or an Android phone. Just use that ID and it populates your, uh, your content instantly. Right, and uh, I guess everybody else is doing it. Google's doing it as well with their universal ID that has you use all their services right. and that sort of thing. Makes sense. Yeah, so it's the same sort of thing, and in this case, it's just using Microsoft services instead. So you notice on, on this, you've got the store here, which is the Microsoft store. You've got the Xbox Live games. You've got the Xbox uh, 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 companion down here. So a lot of the stuff that you would do, it automatically populates into these tiles. So can you kind of show us how it works? All right, well, as we said, it's tiles. It really shouldn't be Windows 8. It really should be tiles 1 here. Tiles 1. So it, it's <laughs> okay. a, a different way of interacting with this. So yeah. um, you can take these tiles and you can move them around. Yeah. You can actually right-click on them and change them. Uh, whoops. Well, you can launch it just by clicking on it yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then uh, going back to it, it's, you go down to the bottom corner. Where the start, hits, start button is start, not. Start button is not. But it used to be. It used to be. So if you remember that, you can go down there, but you got to remember to click on nothing yeah. to get to the start menu again. Okay. So. But I guess in a, in a tablet world, you just want to touch the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. So that kind of yeah. makes sense. So it's, it's a little bit confusing um, on this. You can take these groups and move them around. It, it, it act, interact with it very much in a tablet format. So on the desktop, it's still going to be a little bit of getting used to yeah. in, until your tablet or until your laptop supports becomes, touch. Yeah, touch, yeah. Yeah. So, so I suspect then we're going to see a whole new generation of touch-capable laptops in the next year or so once it comes out. Now, this comes out in the fall. That's what they say. Ish, maybe. Yeah. We'll see. They, they promised <laughs> we'll the fall. See. They've missed their deadlines before, but we'll see. Mm -hmm. Okay. But it's better for them to miss a deadline than to ship a, a buggy product, which was really the case yeah, with Vista, which Vista. is why I was at it. And some people are thinking this could well be another Vista or another Windows ME, something that's not really ready. Well, yeah. But it's, so, it's, it's legacy-free. They're actually getting rid of a lot of the old legacy stuff, so I actually... Mm. Uh, I advocated that with, with Vista, though. Like, come on, like, let's get rid of some of this old stuff because it's slowing everything down. Yeah, but, okay. Well, yes and no. I'm always right. Okay, so. look at this. So you click on Internet Explorer here, and you see the, the tile flipped open, yeah. and now you've got a full screen. Yeah. Uh, Windows Explorer, and we go to Revision 3 and see our friends at TechZilla here. So that's the new way of doing things. Very app-like, like, like you would see on a tablet or yeah. on your phone. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but let's go back to start here yeah. and go to something that's not quite uh, signed up for that. Like, let's go to Mozilla Firefox. Ooh. Oh, crap. It's Windows 7. <laughs> and, and here we go, and it launches it just like it used to do. Uh, and here's where some of the interface problems come into play. It's just like, where do you go from, from here if you want to get back to Metro? Yeah. Again, we showed you how to do that, but it's not really obvious that you go back into this lower corner and wait for that to come up. Okay, got it. And then get back to that. But you have this sort of hybrid of the old and the new. Mm -hmm. So it's getting rid of some of the old stuff, but it's bringing it back when it needs it. Yeah, I got it, I got it. So got it. It's, it's, it's really half and half, which is, it feels half done mm. to me. Well, it probably regard. is half done. Mm -hmm. But I mean, maybe you know, they're gonna go into emulation mode, whatever, we'll see. I mean, yeah. they have to put some legacy systems in here. Yeah. There's no two ways about it. Mm -hmm. You know, anybody who's migrating from Windows 7 is gonna go, 
my old yeah. software has to work on. So. Yeah, and, and to be fair, part of this problem here with it going into that mode with the lovely fish on the desktop is probably because some of these applications that you can put on, on your start screen and pin it here as a tile aren't actually optimized for the Windows 8 experience. So when Microsoft uh, and uh, Mozilla get together and make it so that Firefox does actually open like that, although I don't know if they will play nicely just because they're competitors in the browser space, but they can theoretically get that together and then have those programs open up mm -hmm. full screen, just like the other ones we're seeing that are optimized. I got it. OK, good, good. All right. So show me something cool, like type somewhere or something like that. All right, well, here's, here's what, uh, what you're getting at, I think. Uh, remember what you needed to do to search for something beforehand? You go to start, search, type, filter, go. Yeah, OK, well, now you're just going to start typing uh, anywhere on the start screen. And it will start bringing things up along the side. Oh, good. So you will see uh, apps, settings, files on the side, and uh, then other things that match your uh, match your uh, cool. So you search, search for apps. Search, yeah, search, but you'll see over content. on the over on the right hand side or on the left hand side, Mozilla Firefox, which is what I was looking for, popped up there. Cool. Very so cool. that that's uh, that's one really nice thing. And again, it's getting back into the tablet way of doing things. Right. What's this thing called? App snapping. App snapping. Okay. So let's uh, let's look at uh, let's go back to the start menu and again back to this lower corner and. Click on it. it. It can be really frustrating sometimes. OK, so um, one of the things, if, if you're on a tablet, now we're, we're showing this on an old school notebook that doesn't have a touch display, but you can actually start swiping things around. So you've got the lock screen at the beginning that you swipe up and then enter your password in. But you can also take these things and then drag them around. So you can drag it down to get rid of it. Yeah. But you can also drag it over to one side or the other. Ooh. And so now we've got that up there. We can go back to the start menu and open so up something the, else. The tiling thing, you can do like put multiple windows in a tile configuration. Right. So now we've got uh, this uh, app snapping thing where we've got something on one side and something on the other. So now we've got uh, our maps on the one side and we've got a web browser on the other. Mm. Now if we want to change that uh, around, we just grab this, flip it over. To, we can flip one right off or we can actually flip it over to the side so we bring our it's kind of handy for like side by side kind of uh, business type applications where you want to see a spreadsheet on one side and a web, you know, on the other, uh, like a uh, web browser on the other, that sort of thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, but That's yeah, cool. you can slide it back and forth and go between the two of them as well. So, you can do that. Got and then when you're done with it, you just and take that's it. App snap. App snap. And then when you're done, you just take it and drag it off the bottom of the screen and it's closed. Yeah. Okay, cool. um, and then apparently has uh, Lucky Charms in here. It has Lucky Charms. So when you go to the bottom left, you end up with. Uh, with the, uh, the start menu. But if you go over to the, the bottom left hand, you'll see charms pop up on so the side. It's charms, right? Yeah, so you've got a search window. Frost your lucky charms are magically delicious. They are magically delicious. So we've got search, we've got share, we've got start, devices, and settings. So you can pop up settings like to get more about your, no, okay. I never do. So click on more PC settings. I'm sorry. I know. I, 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 I do. Keep going. Keep going. I, know you, I know you love me. It's fine. <laughs> go. All right. So. Going into Charms, you have the ability to dig down into settings for that particular app. Or if you're on the start screen, you can dig into settings for the start screen. You can do a search from there manually or from anywhere. You can actually hit the button that says Start and come to the Start menu or get into back where you used to be if you're already there. So, What if I want to make it go to sleep? If you want to make it go to sleep, just do this. And then what happens? Is it, like, is it gone like off? Do you have to reboot? Is it like sleep mode? Is it standby mode? What's the story? Well, there's, there's that. but. Uh, uh, that, that's just putting it into standby, standby mode like you would with your, uh, with your tablet. So there you go. And then, and then we're back. But if you want to get rid of it, you can go over to, to start. You can click on your name here at the top and you can hit sign out, which is probably a bad idea because I had a, a screen grab running. Uh, <laughs> And then, uh, and then you actually have a, your lock screen again, yeah. and you can sign out from there. So okay. you can see this, but maybe, maybe they can't. So, so I converted my girlfriend recently to the Mac. OK. Right? And she was like, I don't want to move to the Mac because it's too hard, and it's not like Windows and all the rest of it. And of course, now she loves the Mac. Mm -hmm. So is the, is, does this mean that I have to like, tell her to go back to Windows 8? No. Is it not cooler than the Mac? No. No, you promise? That's, you know, it, it's, it's different. I think it's. It'll be fun to see where this goes in the next few months when they actually release this, yeah. uh, the final version. Because I think this has a whole lot of potential, and I think for a world that's moving more towards tablets, where you can take your tablet, like th this is really going to become useful when you have notebooks that have a tablet for the top and a keyboard at the bottom. And you just detach it and use it as a tablet, put it back down there, or you have a convertible. Now, this is going back to the old school ways when, 
when they first had Windows tablets that were convertible models, if you remember that back in the day. It's right. happening all over again. But now they actually have the operating system that can make it work. Wow. Makes cool. sense? It does make total sense. I mean, I think this thing is going to be, I think you're going to love it or you're going to hate it. That's a simple thing. And you know, if, if you're into the tablet world and you get a this thing on a tablet, you're going to be like, wow, that's awesome. And if you have a laptop that's not touch capable, like the whole legacy thing, it's going to be drive people crazy. Yeah, at this point right now, because I don't have a touch screen on this, it is driving me crazy a little bit. But important to remember though, right? Consumer preview. Consumer preview. You can go and get a copy of this and put it on your legacy laptop and hate it as much as all the rest of us. And then in a year's time, you can buy yourself a tablet, it'll go to come pre-installed, it'll be fabulous. Yes. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Now, Microsoft's renowned for having 1.0 problems, like they'll launch something that's 1.0, and then they'll get it right in the third generation. This would be second generation, really, if you think about this interface, the Metro interface came out over on the Windows phone first. So they're yeah. getting there. Yes, it, it definitely is a, a product that is going to evolve, especially as our hardware evolves. And, and one of the things that Apple's always done is they've tried to push things down the road, whether we like it or not. And this can be good. It's pushing people down the world of uh, road to a post PC world, which right. is Apple's talking about it with the iPad, uh, uh, the new iPad 3, I was going to say, yeah. but we already argued that. Yeah. Um, and then Windows is doing the same thing. Yeah, I got it. Okay, good. There you go. So there's more coming up in the future from us. We're going to keep an eye on uh, Windows 8. Make sure you uh, stay on top of those tips and tricks and whether you should get this thing or not. All right, well, that's it for us this week, right? Yes, if it is. If you want to send us emails, suggest episodes, uh, you want something very specific from us, uh, you want to tell us how handsome we are, you can email us at. Gosh, we're handsome, but way more handsome than Windows 8. I promise. At labrats.tv. And if that's too much to, to type, uh, you can always use the shortcut. Feedback at labrats.tv. Don't forget, you can see us on revision3.com, labrats.tv for all our episodes. We go back to what? God, th almost 300 episodes now. Uh, we go back to episode one. Yeah, Actually, zero, episode, episode zero. zero. So is it one over labrats.tv or revision3 uh, section there and uh, check us out. I'm Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. And we will see you next time. Are you ready?